Hi, I'm Robbie Vardy from Stealth Girl, and I'm here to show you the difference between our lights and competition lights. Everybody's complaint about the LED grow lights is that they don't have enough intensity to produce robust fruit or to produce a good healthy yield. And the reason behind that is because other companies don't use high power LEDs such as we use. The chips that they use are old technology chips which are called DIP. We have them in our remote controls, we have them in our car stereos, in our TVs, and every other electronic you can probably think of. And again, they only put out about 25 lumens for every watt. Let's keep that in mind. 25 lumens per watt. Now, most lights that are out there have about 300 LEDs on there. So if we have 300 of the one watt chips, and we know that they put out roughly 25 lumens for every watt, we know that that number is going to come out to 7,500 lumens. Now, we all know that 7,500 lumens is not that intense. That's probably about 4 T8, 5 T8. So, uh, that, that's where the skepticism comes in. Now, Stealth Grow chips put out about 85 lumens for every watt, and we use 2 and 3 watt chips. So that puts us at about 170 lumens for every chip that we use. And we also have 288 chips on our light. Therefore, we're going to have 288 times 170 equals 48,960 lumens of efficiency. Now again, this is on the 2 watt level, we have a 3 watt chip as well. So the lumens is actually about 51,000 and change. Now, the other complaint about the other LEDs is that they don't have a good healthy spectrum. Stealth Grow LEDs have four different spectrums. We have a 630 nanometer red, a 660 nanometer red, which both chips allow us to get from the range of 600 all the way up to 700, which is what everybody knows is where the the gold is, where the, the fruit of the, of the plant is. Now, the other spectrums that we carry are for the vegetation. is the full spectrum light, which is 2700 Kelvin, and the blue, which is 450 nanometer. And that is used mostly for the vegetation growth, so you have all four bands in your light. You can use it for both veg and grow. Now, other LEDs use only the blue and red. That's another reason why they're not actually getting healthy results. They need to fill in the rest of that spectrum. The plants need it. If you look here at a photosynthesis chart, you can see all the different areas of where plants react to the light. And stealth grow lights having the 2700 Kelvin in there fill in the entire spectrum, giving you everything the plant needs. And we concentrate those bands on the red and the blue where we know is where the plant needs it most. HPS only put out about 20% of their power into those ranges of spectrum. And HPS, for example, has about 120,000 lumens, 150,000 lumens, but it's all yellow light. Heat, wasted energy, uh, many people have different terms for it, but in this case we'll call it wasted energy. So the yellow light that's carried between an HPS only leaves us with just a little bit of healthy spectrum. And how do we compare the Stealth Grow LED light to an HPS? People actually have never had the equipment to measure it until we went out and sought some scientific help from laboratory uh, engineers that are on a government agency level. With scientific meters, we're able to measure the specific range that we want to measure. Today, we're going to show you guys how the Stealth Grow light compares to other competitors' lights and the natural sun. We want to compare in that useful spectrum that we all know is the heart of the fruit the 600 to 700 nanometer, which is exactly what these meters do. This meter is made to measure 650 nanometer with an 80 nanometer bandwidth. That means it goes 40 down, 40 up. So we're measuring everything from 610 nanometers to 690 nanometers. Now, let's go outside and measure this light with the sun and see how the sun compares to our meter. So here we are outside in Los Angeles measuring the sun from 610 nanometers to 690 and we're going to measure it in watts per meter square and then translate that into the lumen value so everybody understands what the sun puts out in that useful spectrum. The sun is reading about 67, 69, 70 watts per meter square. As I hold it up, let's see if we can get a little bit more brightness out of it, yep, 72. Trying to angle it here to the best angle towards the sun here. We're in Southern California, 65, 
69. Let's give the sun up. Oh, there it goes, jumps. 75, caught that right angle. Maybe there was a cloud in the way. So we got 76 watts per meter square just about here on a peak, peak, peak sun at sunny afternoon. Let's go inside and translate that into the lumen value so we can discuss it further. Okay, so now that we came from outside and saw how many watt per meter square the sun puts out in that useful spectrum, let's put that into a lumen value we can understand. So if we saw the sun maxed out at about 75 watts per meter square, and we know that every one watt per meter square equals 683.2 lumens, we can actually do that math. So 683.2 times 75 watts per meter square. 75 times 2 equals 51,240 lumens from the spectrum of 610 to 690 nanometer, which is, we know is the heart of flowering. We know that that's the most important range that we need to cover. Now, we're going to go into our R&D room and show you how a 1,000 watt does and how a uh, stealth grow 